for the first question here okay it is pretty straightforward all you need to do is to take 25 multiply by 5 percent and you get the result as 1.25 for the second question there okay as you can see p is repeating so all you need to do is to extract the p then you will have a balance of 5 plus t inside the bracket question 3 okay basically type in everything into a calculator then correct the answer to two significant figures okay so this second number here is 5 so let's look at numbers behind of it which is more than 5 hence I round it to 4.6 as for question 4a, so this one is 15,060 and to write it in a standard form, you're basically required to change it into 1.506 times 10 to the power of 4 because I shifted to the left by 4 steps. Question 5, okay, it's not as hard as you think, all you need to do is to group them accordingly. So 5c minus 2c minus d minus 3d then you run the calculation you should get your final results as 3c minus 4d for question 6 okay i basically cross multiply this question by putting a denominator of 1 at the 3 cross multiply them and run the calculation you should get your final results as 11. question 7 so things to take note is remember to multiply the numbers together then you arrange the unknown accordingly so 2 times 3 is 6 then x to the power of 3 plus 2 is 5. question 8 okay first you change the mixed numbers into improper fraction which is 8 over 7 so 5 over 16 times 8 over 7 Okay, I simplify it between the number 8 and 16. Okay, then you get your final results as 5 over 14. As for question 9, things to take note is that this is a simple interest. So the results from the simple interest, as stated by the question, it is 90. So 600 times 10, okay, which is 10 years times R percent equals to 90. So after the calculation, you should get your final results as 1.5. Question 10. Okay, so x to the power of 3 being multiplied with negative 4 over 3. And I changed the 8 into 2 to the power of 3. Multiplied with negative 4 over 3 as well. So you left the results as x to the power of negative 4 over 2 to the power of negative 4. To get rid of the negative in both the numerator and denominator, I basically change them upside down. So you should get 2 to the power of 4 over x to the power of 4. So 2 to the power of 4, you change it back into 16 over x to the power of 4 as your final results. Question 11, okay, rewrite the formula and make R the subject based on the statement above. So things that I did was to extract R from the right hand side. So I will have R bracket 2 plus pi okay, equals to P. So R equals to P over 2 plus pi. For question 12, this is a upper bound and lower bound question. So things to take note is the rounding value is actually 0 0.1 divided by 2 okay then you will get plus minus 0 0.05 so they wanted the upper bound of the area of the square so each side must be at its upper bound value so 15.1 plus 0 0.05 you should get 15.15 so since they mentioned about area so you take 15.15 times 15.15 Okay, after correcting your answer to three significant figures, you should get your results as 230. As for question 13, okay, half AB sine C will be the formula that we use to calculate irregular triangle area. 
so half times 11 times 30 times sine 39 okay after you correct your answer in the three significant figures it should be 45.0 Question 14, okay, thing to take note is the scale there. So 1 to 10 million cm. So to convert into kilometers, I first divide it by 100, followed by 1000. So you would identify that 1 cm is equivalent to 100 kilometers. On the map, the area of Slovakia is 4.9 cm squared. So 1 cm times 1 cm, you get 1 cm square. So 100 km times 100 km, you get 10,000 km square. So 4.9 times 10,000, you should get the actual area based on the scale as 49,000 km square. Question 15, keyword here is inversely. So y equals to k over x square. Okay, so substitute. 4 and 2 into the respective space okay, and run the arrangement you should get your k as 32 and the k here is actually a scale factor so y equals to 32 over x squared this is your actual formula okay so substitute x equals to 1 over 2 into it you should run the calculation and get 128 as your final results Question 16 here, they mentioned about sine rule. So sine x over 12 equals to sine 39 over 8. So x equals to sine inverse of 12 times sine 39 over 8. Since they mentioned about the angle should be in obtuse, okay, which is more than 90, less than 180. So you take 180 minus the results that you've gotten and correct it. To three significant figures, you should get your final results as 109. Over at question 17, so two things that I calculated here, which is the big sector's area, and then I minus it off with the small sector area. So do take note that the pi r square formula is meant for a full circle. So for this particular part here, it's only a small section of it. Okay. So you need to take 45 divided by 360 okay, to calculate the specific sector's area. After the calculation, you should get 2 pi as a result and correcting it to 3 significant figures, which is 6.28. For question 18 there, okay, things that I did here was to change the denominator into the same, which is 2 bracket x plus 1. So for the first fraction there, you're required to multiply x plus 1 into both the numerator and denominator. Whereby for the second fraction, you're required to multiply 2 okay, into both the numerator and denominator as well. So you should get your final results as x squared minus 3x minus 8 over 2 bracket x plus 1. So since you can't further simplify the numerator, leave it as it is. Question 19, so this is actually the matrix question, okay? I still show you the full details working over there, however, do take note that from 2020 onwards, this has been removed from this syllabus, okay? So if you are unsure about it, no worries, okay? You can just look at my working, if you want to learn it, you can just learn it up. For question 20, okay, I actually drew down a tree diagram so that you, uh, you can see it clearly. Okay, so if it's late, it's 9 over 10. Based on when it's late, set we still take a bus is 15 over 16, whereby when, when it's late and set don't take a bus, it's 1 over 16. For the other one, if let's say the school bus isn't late, it will be 1 over 10. When it isn't late, set taking a bus is 3 over 4. And when it's not late, set not taking a bus is 1 over 4. Find the probability that set travel on a bus. So there's two conditions here where it is late 
and set to take a bus or when the bus is not late and set to take the bus so I list the probability down accordingly multiply and add them up your final result should be 147 over 160 question 21 okay describe fully the single transformation that maps t onto a okay so this is actually a translation with the vector of negative 1 negative 5 the negative 1 indicates that it shifts towards the left by one step and negative 5 there that indicates that it shifts downwards by five steps Question B on the grid reflect shape T in the line Y equals to X. So I label a T image over there to indicate this. Question 22, okay, this is slightly tricky. So first thing that I did was to convert the 1.2 meters per second into cm per hour instead because the to calculate your final results, okay, it is in liters. So you need to convert your answer into cm first. So by taking 1.2 multiplied by 100, multiplied by 60 and 60, okay, then you will get your centimeter per hour. Okay, so multiply it by six, okay, then you will get 2,592,000. Okay, and to divide it by 1,000, then you will be able to convert your results into 2,592 liters. Question 23, A intersect with B. So the elements that's repeating here is two and five. For the next part, they are referring to numbers of element in B. So there's three numbers there, hence I wrote A3 over there. For the section which cover the elements 0, 4, and 6, this one will be A intersect with everything other than B. And the last part, 2 and 4 is actually an element of A. Question 24, function question. As per usual, first you need to calculate the G function first. Okay, G bracket 3 equals to 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. Then substitute this 8 into f function exposition. Then you'll get 3 times 8 minus 5, which is 19 as your final results. For section B, to calculate the inverse function of f, there's three steps for you to follow. First, change fx into y, swap their position. Okay, so then you'll get x equals to 3y minus 5. Then you rearrange it. And identify your new y as x plus 5 over 3. As for question 25 here, okay, I basically fill up all the information that I've gotten. So the statement OP equals to P equals to 2OA. This one indicates that OA is actually half of OP and AP is also half of OP which directs translate into the results of 1 over 2p and 1 over 2p respectively. Remember for the next statement, we have OQ equals to 3OB and OQ equals to Q. So this one indicates that OB is 1 over 3 of OQ and OQ and BQ equals to 2 over 3 of OQ, which directs translate into 1 over 3Q and 2 over 3q respectively and last part pm equals to mq this one indicates that pm is actually half of pq and mq is also half of pq based on all this information we can now proceed with the calculation of part a b a so for you to get to b a you will go through b o plus o a okay so based on what the information we have we have o b as a 1 over 3 Q. However, since we are looking for BO, you are required to add a negative into it. So you have negative 1 over 3 Q plus okay, our OA which is 1 over 2 P. So your final result should be negative 1 over 3 Q plus 1 over 2 P. So 
Section B, find the position vector of M. So we have two options here. It's either OQ plus QM or OP plus PM. Okay, I did both the route. Okay, is to show you if we get the same results. So your final result should be 1 over 2P plus 1 over 2Q. Both the detailed solution has been attached over there. So question 26, okay, the key information is actually hidden in the accelerating, okay. Basically, I labeled down the coordinate of the last point, okay, which is unknown, 0. The other one is 15, 20. So through that, you are should able to trace back, okay, the, based on the gradient, the coordinate of the unknown there. So the gradient part, you're required to add a negative because the question mentioned about the accelerating. So based on that, you should be able to get your X coordinate as 23, 0. Okay. After obtaining that, you can now proceed to calculate the area because area of a speed time graph is your this total distance travel. So the top part, you have 15. The bottom, which is 23. Okay. And the height of itself is 20. Fill it up into the formula. You will get your final results as 380 meters. So this is pretty much it for paper 21. Okay, I hope you find it helpful. If you have friends that are struggling, feel free to share this paper to them. And I wish you all the best in your upcoming examination. Thank you.